Scream Queens, Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Pilot, which makes a lot of sense because it is the pilot episode. By which I, of course, mean that it is strictly focused on the lives and activities of pilots. So, spoilers for the episode. Um, I'm progressive. And I'm going to hell because this episode really made me laugh. I'm not saying that the behavior depicted is in any way okay. But I gotta say, they they made it funny. I, I love edgy jokes, you know. And it really, really helps that they're not, like... They are actually criticizing behavior. You know, the, a lot of the behavior we see from the sorority and frats that is how sororities and frats behave you know at, at first i thought that dean munch was going to be like the moral center but no she's also kind of an awful person you know it's a world of awful people it's this but you know most of the really awful behavior is carried out by sorority girls and you know it's yeah culture western culture hates for women to be, you know, especially young women, yes, young women who, they also hate women who are not considered young, but they hate for young women to be successful and happy, and this show is basically having its cake and eating to its, its, um, lampshading by saying, no, 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 it's okay that we're you know, saying that these women are horrible people because look how horrible they are and sorority girls are horrible, you know, so Yeah, but It's it's very very funny. I, I am going to hell um, I really love that literally like You know within the opening seconds like literally, you know, it it what is it? 1995, you know, puts up the day, the, the year, rather. What year? And within, you know, some, some music plays, and within, within seconds, like, blood-covered hands, you know, just... And, and, you know, of course we think, someone died, oh, they gave birth. And then, like, two minutes later, someone did die, you know, so, yeah. Really, really love the, the kind of... You know, it's a it's a show that's extremely aware of slasher tropes and does a you know really really good. Speaking only of this episode so far, but I hear that it keeps this up. You know, it satirizes these horror tropes really well. You know, slasher movies open with a you know tend to open with an opening kill, so of course we assume that someone has died immediately, which is like. You know, they're basically saying, yep, this is a slasher movie, someone has died before it even started, you know, we're, we're like, ten seconds in, maybe, and someone has already died, but then, you know, and she gave birth, and she said, I didn't even know I was pregnant, I thought I was having a bread baby, who told you you could have a baby? in this house, you, you know, you're gonna walk out of the, the house all postpartum, that is not good for this party, I'm sorry, it just, holy crap, they're so awful, they're such awful people, <clears throat> I am not missing waterfalls, okay, it is my jam, you know, and it does look like fun, and it is a, a I like the, I do like that song, I remember the 90s, and yeah, she she died in the tub. How do you know? Because of the, her eyes are like frozen. You know, she she she's sitting completely still, and her eyes are like. I I tried to touch one, but it didn't move. Oh, that's so creepy! I can't even wear contacts. <laughs> because that's the that's that's a yeah, you know, contacts. Death. Wearing contacts, I mean, who's to say which is worse, honestly. And I love the introduction to the Chanel. It's so bad. It's so offensive, but it's very, very funny. I'm going to be clear with you. 
I hate sororities, and I hate you. I really appreciate this, the, the, the fact that, no, no, it's not just like sororities, the vague, no, no, no. Personally, she hates Chanel number one personally. Let's see, and she, she said, you know, oh, there's, there's, you know, your sorority was, you know, my, my predecessor's, you know, and, and I love, you know, immediately it sets up the idea of, like, a murder mystery. Oh, your colleague died, and now you have her job. That's suspicious. Yes, I went into my 80-year-old's colleague of 20 years and dropped a, dropped a toaster into her, shop, in, into her bathtub so I could get a 5% pay raise. You know, and the the... Yeah, you know, my predecessors, um, yeah, you know, dealing with, with your sorority was bordering on criminal, you know, and she, she lists all the, you know, so rampant racism and bestiality, and then, you know, oh, apparently, yeah, someone had sex with a goat, and Chanel number one is a rape apologist, oh, God. Let's see, and yeah, we, we learned that Chanel number no. one's predecessor, you know, and, and I do appreciate, yeah, like, clearly Chanel number no. one used, you know, the episode makes clear she wasn't always, like, a really awful person. It is the environment, which is very realistic, and... Yeah, you know, her predecessor was awful, and the, the entire, you know, she, she says at the end of the episode, or near the end of the episode, every, you know, all of my friends, you know, what was it, I pay all of my friends, you know, something like that, yeah. my parents didn't even call me on my birthday, the, you know, and, yeah, uh, someone put, what was it, hydrochloric acid in the the spray tan thing and you know well the the lawyer cleared it the DA is happy with it, you know yeah and and you know I appreciate how gory and gnarly the deaths are so far like you know you've got the spray tan burning to death you've got the 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 maid having you know her face burned off and she you know not only is it you know it's already really nasty when she comes out, but nope, she goes ahead and peels the skin off, so we can see the the muscle and the t t tissue underneath. So, yeah, um, let's see, and the, and and you know the the, what's it called, um, lawnmower, driving over the the head, and just yeah, um, let's see the the. Yeah, and, and, you know, the, the other sorority girl is a lawyer because sororities need legal representation to get out of all the trouble they get into. I really love seeing other people, you know, render Chanel, like, like put, you know, hold, uh, yeah, keep, keep Chanel number one from being like, you know, for, you know, you've got the Dean putting her in, yeah. Not just not letting her get away with and and then you've got the I yeah the lawyer too many new characters I don't remember all their names and Grace's dad is very very happy and he points out you know these sororities are basically like Game of Thrones which you know not quite with the murder and the you know doesn't quite go as far as that but yeah there's definitely. <clears throat> some truth to that and yeah I gotta say loving seeing <clears throat> the the I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get the right there we go so the yeah the first episode cast Kiki Palmer as Zayday, 
absolutely, like, so cool to see her. I loved her in the, the, the Jordan Peele movie, Nope. So, really, really happy to see her in more. Also, super cool to see, you know, always love seeing Jamie Lee Curtis in, and stuff. Love seeing Billy Lord in, in more. Didn't expect Ariana Grande to give as good of a performance. You know, I don't have any problem with it. Well, I don't love that she, you know, she's a white woman... You, you know, pretend to, uh, yeah, to taking aspects of, of, like, black culture to, to help, you know, help her career. Don't love that, but I had, otherwise, I don't really have a problem with her, her music or, like, yeah, you know, she, yeah. But, yeah, really wanted to see more Billy Lord since watching the Star Wars sequel trilogy and just... Yeah, it, you know, with, with, you know, Carrie, Carrie Fisher, R.I.P. has passed. Really, really cool to see so much of her in her daughter, Billy Lord. So, yeah, that, that is, yeah. Let's see, and... I really appreciate that Grace, our lead, isn't bland. She actually has personality. You know, she talks Zayday into joining Kappa Kappa. And, the you know, when Grace approaches the sorority, it's like a cult. And we see the Red Devil, who... It's really only re revealed later in the episode that he is a killer, but yeah. And we go to the Kappa Kappa party, and the some of the young women there want to grow up to be, um, I forget her name, but the um, the daughter of John McCain. Um, I'm gonna re quick get. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's see, daughter, daughter, daughter. Um, Megan McCain, that's it. And one of them wanted to be Megan Kelly, just yeah. And Kappa Kappa loses face because they have to take on all pledges, and you know, the lawyer tries to. Put a nice face on and say, "This is. We've had a discussion. We agreed. This is important. We're taking it into the new century." And you know, Jamie Lee Curtis. I love. I I will never tire of see, seeing Jamie Lee Curtis cut through other people's BS. She's just like, "Here's the deal. You're going to accept everyone who pledges. You know, and and literally, the only people left in the room are the Kappas." And the the pledges that are you know unpopular students, and the the nicknames for the pledges are so freaking offensive and just yeah so so yeah and you know so so of course she you know Chanel number one takes it to Chad and tries to appeal you know and the the he he talks about you know yes I am so popular that any girl I date would be popular they should make a movie out of that and it's just like oh wow that like you know he's not the the yes that is a movie. That is, in fact, already a movie. I, uh, I, I forget its its title, but like the the yeah, that was that was like a cultural thing. You know, he's he's that ignorant about like that was in the nineties. You know, we're not talking about some movie that's like you know a hundred years old or something. It's just yeah. I mean, the the he was probably yeah he must have been like. 
a kid in the 90s for him to be a college student in 2015. So, yeah. And then Boone joins in by saying, you know, that movie would be directed by Michael Bay, the greatest director of all time. And it's like, wow, these are not good people. They are not right. And holy crap. And, you know, Chad does, you know, end up being really frustrated with uh, Chanel number one. And he gives her to the Count of Boone to leave him alone. And then they, you know, you know, hit golf balls at Amnesty International. Just wow. And Chanel number one is a real Karen at the coffee place. Let's see. And Grace and Pete hit it off right away. And she does come to, you know, she she does get past the the. You know, I I don't was. Was he a stalker? Because apparently she pretended to be interested in him. So I guess, yeah, he was, he was obsessed is, is the, yeah. And yeah, they, they find the creepy collage in the, the maid's, you know, room. And Chanel number one, get, you know, she's, she's really, really angry and she doesn't stop to think, Maybe the, you know, the camera made sure that we, the audience, know the fryer is on. You know, the, the camera goes over and it's like bubbling really, you know, we know. You know, if you've watched a slasher movie, any slasher movie, you know, it's about to get real. It's, this is not going to go well. Someone is going to die in that thing, you know. And, yeah, burns off the face. Really great practical effects this episode. I hope they keep that up. And let's see. Yeah, it's, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis has had sex with Chad to, you know, she says that it's for it's for blackmail, and you know, right after, like, you know, he's lying there with a the really really douchey huge grin on his face, and she's like nagging him, and he's you know after after several. Negs, he's like, okay, I gotta say something here. I'm in love with you. And she's like, of course you are, because that's the only way this could get any more depressing. And, like... I'm not gonna make any defenses for Chad. He's clearly a terrible human being. But we are all in love with Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, that's just a fact of life. And the... You know, the, the thing, I'll call you, and since I can't destroy every phone on Earth, that remains a possibility. Oh, wow. I, honestly, I will never, ever tire of Jamie Lee Kurt. Just, she, and it's it's perfect casting. I, I, I'm really glad she's still acting. You know, just, she just cuts right through it. There's no, like... No mercy, no BS. She has had it. And it's just not... It, it, yeah. Let's see. And... Yeah, Peter and Grace investigate, but the maid's body is gone. And we, we learn that the... You know, Chad gets off on death, which... Like, I'm not gonna say that that's true of every single sociopath who has power... But it is, like, some of them clearly do, like, get off on, at the very least, violence. And Chanel number one wants to make sure that they don't tell anyone, so she arranges a blood oath. And it's like, in the name of Odin. Who's Odin? I, I just googled blood oath. This was the first thing that came out. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't compare blood oaths, okay? And the Red Devil, you know, comes after Ariana Grande, and they they text message back and forth, which I guess is a joke about like, 
like I get you know the Red Devil is maybe doing you know in part it's so that we don't hear the voice although I guess they could pull a scream and just have a voice modulator but anyway you know that's but she instead of just talking she actually te texts and she actually texts him no stop stabbing me or so, you know something like that and it's just wow and you know when she tries to get help she she sends out like a chat message or like posts it on on some kind of social media something you know and like he stabs her and she falls over but then she comes back presses enter and then falls over you know again like slasher cuz cuz like sometimes people in slasher movies survive ridiculous things so and yeah grace and zayday want to make kappa kappa progressive and we see that the you know they they've all been buried you know only their heads sticking out of the grass and they're going to be left there and the the deaf girl starts singing Taylor Swift and I uh, I'm going to hell for laughing at that um was she I I um I'm trying to find out. Um, okay, so Whitney Meyer played Deaf Taylor Swift. Yes, she is actually a, a deaf actress, which, I mean, that is better, less offensive than if they hired someone who wasn't deaf. I mean, she seems like a, a you know, she's, she's a, she's a real trooper that um let's see um oh and apparently originally she was supposed to be a lord lordy fan and but but you know she's she's a fan of taylor swift not she says she's not a freaky swifty but let's see and um, she bonded with Abigail Breslin, Kiki Poehler, and Skylar Samuels. Ariana Grande gave her a necklace. And yes, she sent it with a note saying, It was great working with you. You were sweet. And yeah, like honestly, she seems like she was happy with the 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 um oh and yeah she was she was bullied in school and let's see she she went to counseling she had a she did have a few good friends her mom was there for the the whole time so that's there's a direct quote she's always there for me i love her which is great and yeah, I mean, honestly, she doesn't, uh, let's see. Um. Oh, huh. Okay, uh, originally in the script it said, hearing impaired, and she talked with the writers, asked if it would be okay to change it to deaf. Again, direct quote, because I don't want the deaf community to be offended, I think personally because I'm deaf, it would be great to just stick with what I identify as. And the interviewer says, there's nothing wrong with being deaf and to talk about it in other terms suggests there might be. And she, again, direct quote, she said, write nothing wrong with it. And let's see... Yeah, she did not like the halitosis thing. I'm like, okay, thank you. The but but other than that, she said she was fine with the the names that Chanel used for for people and just yeah. Um, the the no, I mean, 
I've, I've, it's, it's one of those things. It's not for me to say, but I have heard people of minority groups say that, you know, they, not all of them, but, but some members of minority groups do want there to be jokes about these minority groups. They, they want there to be edgy jokes about these minority groups. They want this, ah, what's the word? Like, um, You know, they, they, again, for some, it makes them feel included. You know, they, they, so, yeah. I'm not here to say if it's right or wrong, but I, I do think the fact that the character is played by a deaf actress and apparently she did only have, like, she, she had almost no notes for the, the script. And, yeah. Now, the, the, let's see, um, does that, um, oh, that's right, that, those were, those were all of my own notes, and I completely forgot to, to, I meant to read this before doing this video, there's, um, there's a spoiler review of the, of this episode I'm just gonna skim it and yeah so this person likes American Horror Story and yeah so so he yeah he's, he says I think the best parts of these three writers show up in the pilot episode for Scream Queens and yeah, he he was rocked by the girl having given birth in the tub. I paused and went, whoa, in a great horrific way. An immediate thing I loved about this pilot is the horror is so obviously there. It's a good riot. Yet, it's a good riot. Let's see. And <laughs> right from the minute all the people at the party were rocking out to TLC's waterfalls, I thought to myself, I'm going to love this. And... Yeah, he points out the frat sorority stuff is so dumb. Great fodder for comedy horror. And yeah, the, the Chanel character comes across as heavy-handed at first. It's going to serve the story well. And let's see. The... Uh, let's see the, and yeah, so the, the, um, oh, right, right, the, the, yeah, uh, he points out about the Nassim Pedrad's hilarious Gigi Caldwell with the strangest fashion sense I've ever witnessed. Always a treat, whether on SNL or elsewhere. Lay Michelle is flat out hilarious as Hester. Yeah. Let's see. And in general, I, I quite like her. I, yeah, like her in other stuff as well. And let's see. And yeah, he describes Chad and Boone as dude bros. And the, let's see, yeah, he says, we're getting this cast of killable characters introduced in comedic fashion. And that is something I'll deal with after the video. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and he he says, you know, usually in horror, especially of 1980s films, these a-hole-like characters often get killed off too quickly to ever be anything but annoying. Let's see, and he does think that they will come to be more than simply one-dimensional meet-for-kill scenes. And yeah, he points out Curtis is doing some excellent work. Let's see... And, 
Yeah, the the back and forth between Dean and Chanel was really funny. And... Right. Curtis plays well off Roberts in terms of the characters. The older woman who has seen it all knows the tricks, probably pulled a ton of them herself, whereas the younger, brattier, more foolishly confident and conniving sorority queen with, sadly, the world in her palm. And... Yeah, he looks forward to more of there and yeah cinematography and score love the look and sound of the entire episode ominous score parts in the opening sequence and let's see right so i i should say i have not watched american horror story i probably will since that one is also on disney plus like this one is let's see yeah he points out the gnarly kills and let's see. Yeah, he he knows Kiki Palmer is gonna be another excellent part of the cast. Funny lady. And let's see. Ariana Grande's kill scene was absolutely a riot. I thought it made fun of modern day youth culture, smartphones particularly so well, and it had me in stitches. And, yeah, the he points out, I don't think I want to give that away, but he points out what the lawnmower is homaging. Let's see, and... Um, oh, yeah, the, the, hmm. Yeah, he says that the, the burning skin... I think he's talking about the the Chanel number one's um, predecessor. He says it's cabin feverish. I've only seen clips, but yeah, I think that is right. And yeah, he says it, it looks like it's going to be a great show. And yeah, um, I'm really, really stoked. I, th I suppose that is absolutely everything I have to say, but yeah. Um... Really, really happy to be watching this. I, you know, I've, I've, it comes up every so often. I'll, I'll be doing research for something, and it says, "Oh, this reminded me of Scream Queens," and like, you know, and some people absolutely hate it, and some people do find it way too offensive. And I 100% understand, uh, you know, and may, maybe eventually I will feel that way. But so far, like this episode, I absolutely loved. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if it will be every Thursday, but it will almost definitely be weekly. I intend to, every week, talk about an episode of this show. As usual for these things, I have not watched past the episode I'm doing a vlog on. I realize that many other people have, uh, you know, the, the entire first two seasons... Apparently, we are getting a third season, so that's really cool. I, I, yeah, I'll probably do that once I've done the first two seasons. If it comes to Disney Plus, we'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, um, so far, really, really loving it. Right now, yes, that was the thing I wanted to say. Please do not spoil upcoming episodes in the comments. You're you're allowed to like imply or hint at stuff to come but please know like detailed spoilers but yeah um very very entertaining episode uh, yeah really glad that i started on the show so yeah uh i will probably do at least one more video i intend to do at least one more video this week so bye